I think uh, something that frightens me about the future is the notion that there, as we upgrade and modify human beings or create artificial intelligences, there will be beings that are much smarter and probably stronger and faster than human beings what's at all. So uh, I don't think that anyone in the world is really like psychologically ready for that because I think a lot of like the way that we think about one another and humanity is as equals and that's so like programmed in deeply with whatever the state the world is in today to think of ourselves as equals that we almost like uh, viscerally react away like as if it's n like not fair or it's evil that there could be beings that are a lot stronger or smarter but um, so I think that makes us unprepared for dealing with that eventuality actually occurring and I think that's something that we can't avoid like we can't upgrade everyone on the planet slowly and at the exact same time so there we're gonna be looking at a world in the next 50 to 100 years where there are big power disparities and intelligence disparities and we need to figure out a way to like make the world work and make it safe for as many people as possible, taking that into account as a fundamental premise rather than um, like trying to explain it away or like trying to come up with a way where like equality will be preserved forever for millions of years when it's just not going to happen. Uh, I think that um, it depends really heavily like on your politics, what you consider as like being written off. Like uh, there's some people where if they earn like 10% less than their coworker, like they're completely indignant and they're like, you've written me off, like, you know, you don't care about me. And like you have to be like exactly equal or like better than people around you or you're not satisfied. So there's like that trend a lot of places. Um, Whereas, like, throughout most of history, people have, there's been a lot of um, inequality and it wasn't necessarily viewed as inherent evil um, as long as people were, like, surviving and thriving. Some people just had different levels of wealth and power and that's just the way things were. And no one, um, for many thousands of years, there, there wasn't, like, people freaking out about that. But when it comes to, like, more advanced technologies, we, we could be talking about even larger power disparities and where positions where um, people could be lording over one another in a way that was never possible before in history and like controlling the details of people's lives. So like how do we avoid the um, most negative scenarios? I think that we need to ensure that the first beings that achieve substantially greater than human intelligence are uh, compassionate by and large to the entirety of humanity. Uh, and uh, if they aren't, then they might be able to consolidate a tremendous amount of power on their own. So I think that something does need to be, uh, we need to care about equality and um, ensuring that people have like fundamental things they need to survive at the very least and aren't completely disenfranchised, but will also have to accept greater power disparities than in the past. But if, if we look at um, like manufacturing and the industrial revolution, like everyone today almost has like the living standard of some kings of former eras if you look at like our uh like our toilets and there's so many things that we constantly take for granted and it's like no sooner do we get a technology that benefits everyone then we completely take it for granted and act that it's as if it's nothing so i think that um we will you know if we choose never to be satisfied then we'll never be satisfied but if we have um the fundamental things we need to live like a happy life, then we might not be like the top of the heap all the time, but we can still enjoy ourselves. I think that, um, that our understanding of ourselves has been very ad hoc and like pieced together over the centuries. And um, it's, it's essentially even a process of humans being dethroned from being like the favored children of God to being like evolved from monkeys or whatever to um, like beings on a tiny speck in a vast, immeasurably large universe. So it seems like that the comparative importance of human beings in the scale of the universe has gone down over the last few hundred years and primarily like science is what is shaping like that kind of redefinition of the human being 
And um, I think that doesn't um, necessarily mean like the joy or the specialness is truly like sucked out of humanity. But um, it does mean like that we kind of have to take a more sober reevaluation of how we define ourselves. And I think we're somewhat in like a, a void right now where these really powerful like uh, Judeo-Christian ideas that set the way we viewed the world for thousands of years are kind of being discredited. And there's not um, something like substantial like spiritually or metaphysically substantial enough to like fill in that void and we're kind of like people we're staring at ourselves in a mirror going like what am I and like with confusion and apprehension and um, I think like the uh, like the rise of communism in the 20th century was like an effort to, like going way too far in the other direction where like human beings are machines and saying like that we can uh, suck out the greed of humanity by turning people into like good workers and like reprogram ourselves in that fashion. It completely failed because humans are human beings. So I think we're kind of like in this schizophrenic historical era where we're like God's dead, but the music's still playing. And um, there's a t temptation towards scientific radical reductionistic scientific over oversimplification. And we're kind of like oscillating between these two extremes and we'll come to rest somewhere in the middle. So there is human variation and diversity and uh, we're learning a lot more about that as we sequence genomes and we're going to learn a lot more about that and we're finding out that there are racial differences in in huge categories of different areas and um, that race is something that truly exists. So I think that um, we're, but meanwhile on the other hand like traditional um, like liberalism kind of wants to enforce this concept of like we're all blank slates, we're all perfectly equivalent and race, there's no such thing as race which is completely false. So um, I think that we will learn to fear diversity. I think that it's funny that the people that say like there's so pro diversity actually fear diversity because they don't want to hear about like studies analyzing human genetic variation. Whereas like these are scientific realities. And I think that it's actually hurting the United States in our progress of science and a lot of the Western world because it's considered unacceptable to like look into human genetic variation. Meanwhile, there are countries like China that have no problem with looking into it, so they're going to be stepping ahead of us because they're not afraid to study human genetic variation, especially like in the area of IQ, which is very important. Whereas in the United States, there are people like Charles Murray are completely sidelined, and um, it's considered to be like associated with racism, like even the study of human genetic variation. I think it can be like a self-fulfilling prophecy, like if we say that anyone that studies human genetic variation is racist, then it, then racists will tend to go into that area because they're the only ones like um, that are willing to buck the mainline like liberal trend and it actually, um, it's a, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy and it lowers the quality of science that's being done in that area because there are people like that really are racially motivated. So I think that a way to like counter out the racism that we want to get away from is actually to study human genetic variation and also to accept that there are differences between races. And, and I think that as we find out more about those differences, we'll be able to use those slight differences as um, like guidelines for what directions we want to like go in the future. And eventually we'll be re-engineering ourselves based on like a grab bag of different characteristics that uh, might be inspired by like uh, maybe the um, fine motor coordination of the Swiss or something or and like a kind of um, melange of the world's like the best of the world's um, racial characteristics. So I think that if you want to enjoy diversity you have to accept diversity and saying that everyone's the same doesn't do that. I think that discussing intelligence is politically controversial, uh, very much so, um, and it almost like it, it's at the intersection of uh, so many controversial areas like the 
race, and even if we were all the same race, uh, it would still be extremely controversial because it just has to do with uh, innate human differences. And it wasn't until like maybe the year 2000 uh, when like Steven Pinker really started to go forward with the blank slate, criticizing the blank slate notion of human nature, that there was even a small area carved out within mainstream psychology to look at intelligence differences. So I think that also intelligence is extremely difficult to um, define and that ambiguity leaves it susceptible to being attacked as um, not a well nailed down concept and therefore unworthy of study. But given that it's the most uh, important capability that we have as a species, uh, I think that it's worth studying even if it seems ambiguous. But it, it's very controversial and since the only example we have of intelligence are human beings, it requires like looking at human variation and differences in intelligence. And I think that there is a swing in the right direction where it's becoming more acceptable to talk about intelligence. And I think that as we sequence more genomes, and especially as the Chinese take the lead in um, cross-referencing many thousands of genomes and trying to find those alleles that are responsible for contributing to variation in intelligence, they'll become more acceptable. But even still, like studies have found that there's no one allele that uh, is accountable for more than 1% of the variation in intelligence. So it is difficult to nail down with genetics as well, which means continues to be ambiguous. And I think that until there's an interesting or like fundamental substantial breakthrough in the area of connecting genetics to intelligence, then there might be like more reluctance. But when, if we can, like if there is a breakthrough like that, then I think that could make it a lot more acceptable and um, it could kind of crack open the area of intelligence studies. Yeah, I think that the biases in academia almost perfectly reflect biases outside of academia. And the academics are completely similar to um, like casual intellectuals or even like average folks on the street. And that the notion like that they have their own like highfalutin academic reasons for like saying these are unscientific is totally wrong. Like the reason why academics are afraid to discuss intelligence is the exact same reason why people are afraid to discuss intelligence like at the family dinner table or something. It's because it's a controversial topic. It has to do with innate human differences. It opens up the notion of like social class, which is another like hard part. And this is, you know, like hundred years ago, people didn't have any issue with discussing these differences. It was just like, it was accepted that there were differences in innate capability. And I think that people still do accept it like more deep down uh, now, but on the surface, it's politically incorrect. So when it comes to discussing intelligence, that it just considered like politically challenging area that like, people can lose their jobs by having the wrong findings. And science, like there are so many people in science that use it just to c confirm their pre-existing biases and it's not, like the idea that science is like this rarefied like separate realm than the rest of like intellectual inquiry, or, like casual intellectual inquiry is completely wrong. It's just, it's part of the same like ferment that all other thought is. And it's only through like many decades of uh, tremendous amounts of evidence that things can change. So I'm not really that like hopeful about the future of studying intelligence, but I'm more hopeful about the future of studying uh, friendly artificial intelligence because it uh, connects to an area that is economically important, which is artificial intelligence. And if it doesn't involve um, studying human variation in intelligence, that's not politically incorrect. It's okay to study intellectual variation in uh, machine intelligence because it's not human beings. So I think I'm hopeful that as AI in general gets better, it'll be okay to look at artificial intelligence and uh, how to create safe artificial intelligence. And in many ways, engineering artificial intelligence doesn't actually have necessarily a lot to do with human intelligence and the way intelligence works in humans and the way friendliness works in humans. There might be big differences there.